Hey guys, I'm back for another review, uh, this time by a uh, fairly well-known uh, French uh, cold horror film director, uh, Jean Roland. Um, he's actually better known for doing uh, very uh, atmospheric type uh, vampire stories, and he also did some porn films throughout his career. Uh, but the one I'll be doing uh, today is actually sort of a zombie-slash-infected-people film called The Grapes of Death. Um, this is a film that was uh, released by uh, Redemption Films. This is the Blu-ray. Uh, it's from 1978. Um, the film opens at this uh, vineyard in France up in the mountains somewhere. And these guys are spraying this pesticide uh, on the vines and so on. Well, uh, kind of at the very end of the end of the work day, one of the workers is showing signs of being sick and not feeling well. So he tells the uh, the boss that he's not feeling well, and the boss says, "Oh, you know, maybe you just overworked yourself." But anyway, tell the boys that I'm getting a better mask that'll keep out that pesticide tomorrow. And as an interesting little cameo by Jean Roland himself, who plays another of the vineyard workers that uh, happens to be in that scene, kind of Alfred Hitchcock-esque, I suppose. Uh, then we cut to a train that's rolling through the mountains in France with this gal, and it turns out that her fiancé is this uh, vineyard manager guy, and she's going to visit him. She's been away for a while in Paris, and so she's coming back to see this guy. And on the train, she met this other gal who's uh, her trip eventually will lead her to Spain, where she's seeing some family or something, I don't recall now. Um, so there's some brief chatter between the two gals, and then at one of the stops, uh, the guy who is starting to become ill at the vineyard hops on the train, and by now you can see he's uh, you know, starting to bleed and get a little deformed and start acting a little crazy. Well, he ends up killing the travel companion of our main actress, and then he's chasing after the the main actress. Uh, she ends up hitting the button to stop the train. She jumps out. He gives chase, but she gets away and ends up at this little farmhouse that's off into the mountains. And it's a, a father and his daughter, and they let her in, and she asks if she can use the phone to call the police because this crazy man is after her. And they tell her, well, the phone doesn't work. And then she asks if she can borrow their car because there's a car parked out front. And he says, well, no, the car's broke down. And he tells her, well, you just settle down. You know, go on upstairs, lay down, chill out, relax, this will all be fine. So she goes on upstairs. As she does, she passes a bedroom which looks to have a body laying on it. When she goes in and uncovers the body, well, it's this farmer's wife and she's dead and her throat is slashed. So she panics, runs down the stairs. The daughter says, yeah, my father has been infected by this disease that's been going around and he's gone crazy he killed my mother he's been threatening to kill me but i've got the keys to the car so we can you know try and make a break for it well the father's in the other room he overhears this he busts into the room grabs the daughter throws her on the table rips her shirt off shows this other gal and she's laying there topless look she's infected too she's gonna get crazy so I have to do her and he grabs a pitchfork and plunges it into her killing her and then he chases our main uh, the main gal 
Well, she runs out and, and hops into the car, gets it started. Well, the father gives chase and he ends up saying, well, you know, I'm finished off. I've killed my family. Finish me off. So she reluctantly drives and runs him into a, a, a stone fence outside of his, uh, his house, killing him. Well, then she takes off into the car, into these uh, old ruins, like it's a really old town. I mean, the, the visuals in the area this film was filmed in were, were, were amazing. So she stops to get out and have a look about while another of these infected people comes around the corner and kind of gives her chase. So she hops in the car, and of course she can't start the car. Uh, you know, total horror cliche there. Well, this guy keeps telling her, oh, I'm, you know, I need medical help. You're going to help me. I won't harm you. Well, she won't let him into the car, so he smashes out the window while she grabs a pistol that's, I don't recall if it was in the car. I don't remember where she gets the pistol, but she grabs it, shoots him in the head. She still can't get the car started, so she gets out starts wandering amongst all these uh, ruins and ends up running into this blind gal who's kind of wandering aimlessly about and realizes this girl is, isn't infected. And this girl says, well, there was some kind of commotion in my town, so my caretaker, Lucas, ends up, you know, sent me out of the town, told me to run away, but I don't want to be away from him. So if you help me get back to the little village, you know, I'll try and get you lined up with a car or a telephone or something so you can call the authorities. So they end up going back to the town. They're seeing dead bodies strewn out all over. So our main actress knows something's horribly wrong here. They end up finding the blind girl's home. They go in, she's calling for her caretaker, but he's nowhere to be found. So our main actress, I forget her name, ends up telling her, well, we should just chill here and crash out for the night, and in the morning we'll try and settle what's going on. Well, she you know, turns her back for about two seconds, and the blind girl takes off out into the town into the night, ends up coming upon uh, Lucas, who is her caretaker, who's clearly been, become infected and has gone insane. He grabs her, takes her to one of these, uh, one of the old buildings in this village, ties her up to the door, and then comes out and he's saying, Lucy, I love you, and then he chops her head off with a, uh, you know, like a, a hatchet of some sort. And it's, uh, you know, it's pretty gruesome, especially for the time the film was made. Well, he grabs her severed head, and then him and a bunch of these other people, most of which have, have sort of turned into zombies or what have you, and they start stalking our main actress. Well, she kind of, you know, makes a break for it, and this other gal opens the door, and says, come run in here, everything's cool. Well, she gets in, and then the gal in this house is played by Bridget LaHaye, who did a lot of uh, porn films and also starred in a lot of uh, John Roland's films as well. And she says, well, come in here, have a drink, have something to eat, you'll be safe here. Well, our main actress is like, we got to get out of here, we got to get out of this town, we got to go now. So Bridget LaHaye says, her character says, okay, well, let me change into my clothes and we'll scoot. So they decide to sneak out the back door of this uh, building. And as they're getting, you know, they, they travel a little ways and all of a sudden she grabs our lead actress and says, over here, guys, I've captured her, I've captured her. Well, basically what she wanted to do was, was capture the lead actress and get him to go after her so she could make a getaway. Well, so she takes off running, and she ends up running into these two uh, farmers who hadn't been affected. One of them has a rifle, 
and says, you know, hey, you know, you got to get me out of here. The town's been overrun, this and that. So, you know, they're like, okay, fine, we'll do that. We'll go ahead and, uh, you know, help you out. And they tell her, well, you just wait in the truck because then they hear our main lead screams again because these zombie people have gotten a hold of her. So they run back into the village and, uh, you know, end up shooting several of these zombies because they're trying to, you know, uh, find out where she's at. Well, she ends up leaving the village and finds Bridget LaHaye's character at the car. Well, then Bridget's, you know, all sorts of pissed because she got away. So the two of them start fighting and she ends up grabbing a stick that's on fire. She sets Bridget's face on fire. Well, anyway, the two guys come back to the, to the truck and they find her. And she's like, you know, you guys could have got me out of here. You know, Bridget LaHaye is, but is saying this. You know, you guys could have saved me. I was unmarked. I was unaffected. Now my face is all scarred. And it's all your guys' fault. So she proceeds to throw the uh, burning stick into the back of their truck, which has been, uh, which is full of dynamite. And ends up blowing it up and blowing herself up. So the three, the two farmers and our lead end up going on foot and she says, well, you know, we still have a chance. My fiance is at the uh, vineyard and if we can get there, then there'll be help. And I've been going on a long time, guys, so I'm going to leave it right there. Um, but my thoughts on the film, it, for a Jean Roland film, it's actually pretty gory. Uh, a lot less sleazy than some of his other works. Certainly more of a horror type film. Uh, there's great atmosphere. And the settings are just beautiful. Completely beautiful. So, for anybody who's into Roland's work or a uh, fan of early atmospheric type horror films, I would highly recommend this film. Anyway, it is The Grapes of Death from Jean Rolan, and that's about all I got for you now guys, so I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot.